So hi guys, my name is Mansi Anand, and I welcome you to this series called RBI Twenty Four Seven. So guys, as most of you would be knowing that in this series we conduct a five question session, and before moving to question number one, I would like to ask you guys to subscribe to our channel. So if you are a new entrant here and you have visited this video first time, guys, don't forget to press this button. It can help you to stay in touch with us, and don't forget to. Press this bell icon. It can help you to stay updated regarding every notification that comes up, right? So after that, you can also join our Telegram group. On this group, you can post all your doubts and queries, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. So it's our doubt resolving mechanism, right? And so I hope you are ready for your question number one. And here is your question number one for today. This question says. This question says select the correct option about book to bill ratio. So very simple question tells you five five options about a ratio which is called book to bill. Let's move ahead to the correct solution for today, and the correct solution for this question is option B. So option B means a ratio above one implies a strong demand. Right. So guys, before understanding this ratio, let us understand that. What is the meaning of this ratio? What is its formula, and what does it stand for? Okay, here you can see. So, book to bill ratio is basically a ratio which which tells a company a measure when they get or when they divide orders received by orders shipped. So, the measure that they get is known as book to bill ratio. so the orders that they are booking and the orders they are billing very simple right so how does it help companies see they are trying to find out that what orders are they receiving and in relation to what orders they are shipping so basically they are trying to analyze that how much is the demand in the market for their product because the orders received it tells them about the demand of their product so if the demand is high then this measure orders received is going to be high whereas if it is less it is going to be low right and in relation to this orders received what orders or at what speed are they able to fulfill those orders right so it is a ratio and it is gen usually measured for a specified period generally a month or a quarter and it is a very widely used metric in technology industry specifically in technology industry <coughs> specifically in the semiconductor equipment sector right so as i just told you it reveals how quickly a business fulfills demand for its products and ratio shows the strength of a sector right how does it shows the strength by telling what is the demand what is the demand for the product of the company right such as aerospace or defense manufacturing and might be used when data mining whether to purchase stock in a company or not so guys this point comes for, from the investor point of view let's say i am an investor i want to buy a company shares right now i want to see what is the performance of this company whether it has any growth potential or not or are people liking the goods or services that this company let's say a limited is providing in which i am interested to buy some shares right so i can analyze this ratio which is known as the book to bill ratio if it is high if is this ratio is more than 1 that means company is receiving more orders than they are shipping that shows strong demand right so that that is going to tell me that the company has huge growth potential right a very simple question and a very simple ratio here you can see that is why the correct option is a ratio above 1 implies a strong demand right moving ahead to the second question for today here is the second question i hope the screen is perfectly visible let me read it out to you so this question says in an economy the difference between weighted average lending rate and the weighted average domestic term deposit rate is more in case of private banks than in 
public sector banks now which of the following can be inferred from this statement so guys this is a question which requires you to pause the video and read these given four statements very carefully right so first of all analyze this situation which is given to you and after that in relation to this situation try to analyze that which of the following statements you can make out from this situation right so i'll move ahead to the solution and the solution is option e option e means 1 and 4 are the correct statements that can be inferred from this given situation so option uh, statement 1 and statement 4 right so guys this so first of all let us analyze the situation this situation it says that that the gap between the difference between weighted average lending rate and weighted average term deposit rate is more in the case of private bank so guys first of all we have to understand the meaning of these two terms first of all the lending rate as well as the deposit rate so guys lending rate is the rate at which banks lend so simply if i want a loan let's say i want to buy a new car i go to my bank i tell them that okay i i, I want to buy this car and give me some loan for that the rate it is going to offer to me is going to be the lending rate here here is the lending rate after that now if i go to my bank and i tell them that uh, i have got a new job and i am getting my salary i want to deposit my money into your bank then they are going to open an account and the rate they are going to provide me on that bank account is known as the deposit rate i hope now you get the difference between the lending rate and the deposit rate so guys do understand that the rate a bank provides to its client on their account is always lesser than the lending rate and the difference with, between them is going to be bank's profit right so this is the lending rate which is going to be greater than the deposit rate and the difference between them is going to be bank's profit now if the difference between these two rates is widening for a certain sector of banks so bahut simple si baat hai agar inke beech ka difference badh raha hai to isse aapko pata chal raha hai ki us particular bank ka profit badh raha hai right now this is this statement is saying that this difference is this difference is rising for private banks more than public ba public sector banks which tells us that private banks are making more uh, private banks have more prof uh, profit margin as compared to the public sector banks that is why they will be able to set aside more money than public sector banks for for provisioning because see the profits that a bank makes they set out they set aside the provision from those profits right so the higher the profits the higher is the money available for making a provision so guys why do you think a bank makes a provision obviously in case it uh, makes some bad loans it has to face nps so that it can cover the losses from this provision right so this statement is correct and after that it is evident that private sector banks are providing loans at higher rates obviously that is why the lending rates are higher and that is that is leading to the higher difference in case of private sector banks that is why private sector banks private banks are providing loans at a higher rate as compared to the public sector banks right so these two statements are false and these two are right i hope now you get this question and we can move ahead so here you can see a graph and in this graph you can see the difference so this red line shows you private banks and the gray line it shows you public sector banks so you can see the difference so this is the interest rate differential the difference between their rates so the difference is 4.67 for private banks and 3.08 for public sector banks so guys what we have to analyze here is see in the beginning of in the beginning of this year 2020 the differential for public sector bank has not 
surged much but in case of private banks it is rising so maybe private banks they have sensed that the needs that they need more profit for setting aside the provisions that is why they are increasing their lending rates they are providing loans at a higher rate which is leading to more difference between the lending rate and the deposit rate which is not in the case, which is not the situation in the case of public sector banks you can see a flat a relatively flat line here right so now let us look at the reasons behind them as you can see here private banks better prepared to handle the virus post covid loan defaults banks pay a certain okay this is the definition right clearly tells us that private private sector banks expecting bad loans to go up before the pandemic struck as india was entering <clears throat> an economic slowdown that is why they started rising their lending rates so now we have to understand that why cannot public sector banks do the same why are they not rising their lending rates because see public sector banks they uh, in in those banks major stake is held by government so there is a pressure to lend at lower rates so that they can stimulate the demand of money in the economy by boosting the cheap by boost by infusing cheaper credit into the economy right so that is why psbs are supposed to lend quickly to mitigate the effects of the slowdown and that is the reason of the difference between the differentials of psbs and private banks very easy question moving ahead to the third question for today here is the third question okay this question says why are many indian companies trying to indulge in buying foreign company amidst a pandemic very simple question moving ahead to the solution and the solution for this question is option a so you must be hearing news about different indian companies acquiring many foreign companies now why are they doing so because see because of the impact of virus many companies are suffering from financial difficulty so their fundamentals might be good they might be good viable companies but they are suffering through some uh, temporary difficulty so indian companies want to capitalize on that so let's say there is an indian company so let's say there is tata now tata is see in tata is uh, witnessing a us company which is going through some financial difficulty now tata really likes this company and it thinks that okay this can be very good for my profile now due to virus its values its value has gone down now tata wants to capitalize on that by buying it at the cheaper price right so indian companies they want to pick up attractive assets whose valuations have been hammered by the virus right you can see here but see not all indian companies are able to do this because uh, men, major majority of the indian companies they are also suffering through financial difficulties that is why only the big companies which have huge stacks of fund only they can go for such acquisitions right companies with strong balance sheet shaken off from the vi uh, virus to chase overseas acquisitions and pandemic has racked india's outbound deal volume so india is doing although lesser deals internationally 20 by 23% this year there have been signs of some recovery in the recent weeks so software services drugs and packaged goods see this is a sector wise uh, demarcation some sectors experiencing <coughs> a strong demand or um, a good <clears throat> a good phase even during the pandemic but some sectors they are much affected like tourism aviation hospitality they are going through a bad phase but come but sectors like software edtech pharma packaged food industry fmcg they are having an okay phase right so they remain unscathed during the pandemic while the pandemic has presented many opportunities but but indian companies are not rushing into it because only a few of them are expected to have this sort of funds as i just told you not all of them and confidence is also very important how many of them have the confidence to go out shopping for new companies in this time when uh, there is so much uncertainty in the economy moving ahead to the next question okay so this is the question and this question says dash is an informal method of transferring money without any physical money actually moving 
सो मूविंग आई टू द करेक्ट सॉल्यूशन फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन सो द करेक्ट ऑप्शन फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन डी विच इज विच इज हवाला सो हवाला ट्रांजेक्शन आर दी ट्रांजेक्शन इन विच दे आर सेंडिंग दी मनी फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू अनादर विदाउट एक्चुअली फिजिकली मूविंग दी मनी सो गाइज वट वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस दैट हवाला इज एन अनरेगुलेटेड एरिया एंड इलीगल इन मेनी मेनी कंट्रीज सी this diagram can help you to understand this hawala better so whenever we have to send some funds abroad let's say one of your cousin lives uh, in us you want to send them some money uh, how are you going to do it you're going to approach your bank transfer funds but obviously bank is going to get some commission out of it and that money is going to be on record right because it's in your bank statement everyone knows you send the money to your that particular person your cousin in usa right but if you don't want anyone knowing it this is one area although this is not uh, this is uh, this is illegal right so how does it happen here you can see there is a person tom this tom person wants to send some money to sue right so now tom has given money and a password to one broker in his own country let's say tom belongs to usa whereas sue belongs to uk right so now this broker in usa is go has received the money and the password from tom who is the sender and the broker she contacts to her partner in other country uk who is going to contact the receiver right and she sends a password to the broker and this broker gives the same amount of money to the person the money was intended to be given now uh, for authenticating the transaction this person the receiver so has to tell the same password to this broker in uk and this password has been given to so by tom right but this is uh, this process is not legal and it is unregulated because there are no taxations involved although the brokers they have their own commissions but it is usually lesser than what uh, what what is uh, what what is being charged to the formal measures right so that is why people resort to these illegal measures because the cost of transaction is very less as compared to the formal methods right i hope now you are clear with the process here you can see it may have been used since ancient times today widely found among expats sending remittances home so this is one major usage sending remittances people who work in other countries they send money back to their families in their home countries using this method if they don't want any taxation and one thing see there are some benefits of using why do people do it first of all no taxes involved lesser cost of transaction after that one major one very one very huge benefit anonymity no one is going to know who sent the money to whom so there is there there are no records of it as i just told you in case of if you are transferring money through bank there are going to be records but in this case no records no one knows that is why this is one method used by terrorists or many anti social elements like money money launderers right provides anonymity official records are not kept source of money that is transferred cannot be traced also finding a footing in the world of financial technology so as we are moving towards a more uh, technologically advanced world this method is not fading away but finding its way right which grant access to money transfers among the unbanked on and the underbanked populations of the world so this is sometimes used by those uh, sections of the society who are not privileged enough to have the experience of formal banking banking sector or by some anti social elements like money launderers or terrorists so guys on a totally different note since we are talking about hawala money uh if you remember we have talked about cryptocurrency many a time many times in our sessions 
so many people accuse cryptocurrency of a similar thing because it on it also provides anonymity and lesser cost of transaction and it is a decentralized system right so it is it is just a uh, uh, it is just an argument that i am putting forward that many people also accuse cryptocurrency of the same things of being used by anti social elements of being used a, by the terrorists to send money or to transfer funds right so you can connect that see because it was uh, it was being told that hawala is finding the way into financial technology so it can be a medium for it right moving ahead to the last question for today and here is the last question and this question says sebi is planning to reduce risks in debt funds for this it has come up with some proposals select the options from below which is not a part of these proposals very simple question moving ahead to the solution and the solution is option b option b means maximum cash holdings so except this all four are the method are the measures being taken by sebi so guys if you remember we have discussed the meaning of backstop facility in one of our previous sessions in a recent session and we also discussed minimum cash holdings and swing pricing here first of all we are going to discuss what is repo and have a brief introduction of others as well see so guys uh, repo transactions you know repo rate charged by central bank what happens in in that transaction which involves central bank and commercial bank commercial bank borrows from the so here is your commercial bank borrowing money from the central bank and what does it give in return collateral in form of bonds so basically it's a repurchase agreement the commercial bank is telling rbi let's say the commercial bank is bank of baroda so bank of baroda tells rbi that you take my bonds for now you buy my bonds for now give money in return buy my bonds and after uh, after some time i am going to buy it back so it's a short term loan facility right so now sebi wants that similar facility should be there for other bond issuers or other entities as well as you can see here repos extended the borrower offers a security to take a loan what is the security bonds so that is why sebi is thinking that let let us set up an entity which will buy the bonds or which will take the bonds from the stressed entities and provide loan to them in return and to those entities they will buy bonds of those entities which are not which are higher triple b rated or higher corporate bonds right which are usually illiquid they are unable to find borrowers sorry they are unable to find buyers so guys you know that in india bond market is not very developed except for the government bonds that is why see very simple there is nothing confusing about it sebi is thinking to set up an entity this entity is going to buy the bonds of those companies which find difficult to sell their bonds right in this way liquidity is going to be infused in into those companies right borrow money against their assets when redemptions are high without having to sell them at the throw away prices so if there is a mutual fund and this or there is a company this company a mutual fund has invested into this company and this mutual fund is facing some redemption pressure so in that case this entity is going to buy the bonds of this company so that redemption pressures can be handled right and after that they can return the money to this entity and take their bonds in return just like it happens in a repo transaction right after that sebi may may create a backstop mechanism discuss backstop in detail when companies they are not able to raise the money they intended to they use backstop facility we uh, discuss different types of backstop facilities after that sebi is thinking let us make the uh, let us make the debt mutual funds invest some of their money 
into liquid assets so that if they ever face redemption pressure they can easily convert them into cash right liquid funds are to hold at least 20% of their assets in cash or cash equivalents such as treasury bills so basically in liquid assets although there are no such rule for other debt fund category right so there is no rule for debt fund category but they are thinking to bring one into scene after that swing pricing swing pricing is nothing but a, uh, a charge which would be made applicable on those investors who will redeem their investment in a time of crisis right uh, i think we discussed about this also we didn't discuss the term but yes we discussed this method that there uh, there will be a charge on those investors who are going to uh, pull their money back in in a time of crisis and putting that particular fund into difficulty right so guys these were the five questions for today i hope you learned something new from this video so guys before ending the session i would like to discuss one thing with you uh, th this is just going to take a minute and uh, so guys i would want you today to learn a little bit about a personality who just passed away on 26 september right so she is a very she was a very famous economist very esteemed name in the uh, in the history of indian economy right and th those of you who know her name please mention it in the comments and those of you who don't please go search about it learn about her a little more a little more and apart from being a great economist that she was uh, she she um, she's also an inspiration to um, to a lot of young girls who actually want to make a career in the field of finance and economy right so with that note i would like to end the session and i'll see you in the next session till then you take care and uh, keep your studies going on and i'll see you in the next session thank you for being here